Hey there, Sharon Ralston awesome here. Welcome to day 350, 349, 359. I'm hurrying the year along. 349 of our Get Your Goals annual challenge. Today, let's go ahead and set our financial goals for next year. 2024 is quickly approaching. And before I hit the end of any year, I'd like to make sure that I have at least thought through and started to consider what is it I want to accomplish next year. So that's what we're doing. We're going through a process. We created an eight step process on last Sunday. And we're going through it for each different area and aspect of the life framework, physical, mental, emotional, spiritual, financial today. And then we'll do the rest throughout the rest of the week and the weekend and into next week because there's nine different areas and aspects of our life. So what are we going to do? First thing we do is we identify what area of our life that we're setting goals for. That is our financial area. And we spent an entire month this last year defining what does that mean? What does financial health look like for you and for me? And how are we going to set our goals then around what we want it to look like next year as well as this year? We don't want to do a goal challenge this year and then not have processes and systems and tools that we take into the future with us because that would be a waste of our time and energy, right? We can do one thing every day to achieve our goals this year, but if we aren't learning and then repeating that next year, what's, what's, what's it for? What's the purpose? Not much. So today... We're going to quickly run through our goal process again, and we're going to apply that. We're going to come up with at least three different goals for our financial area of our life. And again, remember these areas are interconnected, and we'll talk about that uh, <clears throat> next week. How do we take all of these goals? If we set three goals in each of the nine areas, we're looking at 27 goals. That is a lot. For me, that's way too many things to think about and focus on. Uh, that's why throughout this last year, I've continue to automate as many things as I possibly can and combine things so that if I've got 27 overarching goals, I've actually got maybe a handful of really big things and strategies that I'm working on and everything else I try to put on autopilot so I don't have to consciously think of it. Because guess what? 27 things are way too many to consciously think about and keep at the top of our mind. Uh, and I'll share some of the strategies and what I do to make sure those things don't fall by the wayside uh, going forward in 2024. So what's our process? Number one, identifying the area, financial. Number two, examine and think about and review what are my core values right now with respect to financial health and well-being? What are my thoughts? What are my beliefs with respect to finances? Do I have any that are conflicting that I need to say, hmm, I, I thought I let go of that this last year, but I didn't. So maybe I need to do a little more work on that. We're going to do a SWOT analysis, which is to look at what are our, my strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats with respect to finances next year. And then what am I feeling and what have my past experiences been and what do I want my future experiences to be with respect to finances? Then our next step is to think about, okay, well, what are my biggest financial challenges right now? Because if we don't address those things, guess what? We're probably not going to achieve our goals next year. So we're going to make sure that we're addressing those things. We're going to use our SOAP framework, right? Our, our uh, soul framework to deal with any challenges or uh, setbacks or problems that come up. And then step six, we're going to analyze, rate, and rank all of, oh, forgot to brainstorm. Step five, we have to brainstorm goals, right? What are some of the possible goals? Given all this information about ourselves and our financial situation, let's brainstorm some goals. Let's brainstorm based on what do we want to create next year? Not what is right now, what do we want to create? And once we brainstorm those, we're going to analyze, rate, and rank the ones that we come up with, and we're going to pick three. We're going to pick three things uh, because, like I said, 27 ideas and goals is a lot. So if we can mesh them down to one primary thing and then a couple of little secondary things that support that primary thing financially, we're going to make a lot more progress than if we have, you know, three totally diverse financial goals. Maybe one is, you know, reduce credit card debt, maybe, or... Uh, flip out and replace uh, bad debt, which is bad debt to me is things that we're spending, if we're expensing, like if we're, we're paying for expenses, like if we're paying for things and we don't have the money and we're ranking up credit on credit cards, for example, uh, for food and gas and things that we don't pay off every month. I, co I personally consider that bad debt. Based on my past experience, it's a lot easier to charge things up and then struggle paying them off, but then you get into that limp interest loop and you can actually never catch up. <clears throat> uh, credit card companies have set it up that way. It's intentional. 
That's how they make money. So maybe that's one of yours. Maybe uh, yours is to start a business. Maybe yours is mine uh, to work on mine and start my nonprofit. Uh, not, not start, but continue to grow and expand it. Uh, <clears throat> it's going to get started before the end of this year, which means I've got like 10 days left. I get moving. Uh, then we're going to combine and call through, get down to three. We're going to write those three things down, right? We, if, my dad taught me a long time ago, if you don't write it down, it doesn't count. It doesn't matter. And that was reinforced for me in corporate America that if it wasn't documented, it didn't happen. If you didn't keep a record of it, it didn't happen. Why? Because that's what holds up in court. Literally, you have to have documentation and records of what you've done, what you've said, et cetera. Uh, and then finally, we're going to just share one, one financial goal for next year. Share it in the comments below. I would say mine is going to be to uh, expand and see what I can do with my nonprofit. That'd be one of my three for sure, because I'm, I'm super excited about that. And I'm curious about what I can do in the nonprofit realm. Never been involved in it before. So it's a whole new learning curve for me. All right, that's it. Goal process, financial goals, three financial goals. Share one. Any questions? What do you do? You hit me up or you go to the Get Up and Go Challenge private Facebook group page and you put some search components in the side column and you get more help than you could possibly imagine ever wanting or more of me or my voice and things and, and videos than you could possibly ever want or imagine. Again, there'll be a write-up in Guide 17 for day 349, which is today. Uh, <clears throat> in that, otherwise, you can always ask for help. Please ask. All right, have an awesome day and I'll, of course, be with you tomorrow.